Ladies and Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Tidacom video, we're going to be starting a bit of an AMD fest because there's a lot of news coming out from AMD. And after much thought and deliberation, it just seems better to split this over a couple of different videos simply because there's just so much to discuss. But first, we're going to be sticking with the GPU side of things, and this one, of course, would be AMD's Arctic Islands. So we all know that the basics of the next generation GPUs, of course, is going to be utilizing. Uh, high bandwidth memory 2, which obviously means a hell of a lot of extra memory bandwidth available, plus as well larger amounts of RAM on board. But there's been less leaks, I guess you could say, with AMD compared to NVIDIA. Like, for example, the Pascal architecture, we actually know quite a bit. However, now this is starting to change. Because obviously AMD are wanting to be rather boastful about the products in its lineup because we all know about their financial situation. Therefore, it's very important that they reassure both investors and potential customers in the future. Hey, you know what? We actually have some really good products. Don't worry. Our revenue will be resolved in the next few you know, months or what have you. So don't worry yourselves. So during... The earnings call, Lisa Su, who is of course the CEO of AMD, stated that the next generation GPUs will double, I repeat, double the performance per watt over the current generation Fiji lineup. Now, that is impressive. So, and a direct quote would be, and I, well, quote, we are also focused on delivering a next generation GPUs in 2016, which is going to improve performance per watt by two times compared to our current offerings, based on design and architecture enhancements, as well as advanced FinFET products process technology. Just for your point of reference, and of quote, the current Fiji GPU, the highest end one, so for example, the Fury X, has a grand total, <coughs> excuse me, or 4096 stream processors, which, I mean, back in the days of the, you know, the R9 290 and the 290X, we fought just over 2,800, um, yeah, 2,816, if memory serves. I was about to say 2,560, but no, it's 2,816, I think. Anyway, we thought that that was quite a large number, but Fiji is absolutely gargantuan in size, and accounts for 8.9 billion transistors with a die size of 596mm. So, the next generation Greenland, which is of course Arctic Island, Greenland would be the flagship, on the other hand has 18 billion. Now the die size is supposedly 500mm, which is still very impressive. Now, what we can ascertain from this that if the die size is at least 500 mm, it's possible it could be up to around 600, but let's just assume for sake of argument 5 to 600. Then, what we can do based upon some basic speculation is say that the number of stream processors in this GPU are probably going to be between 6 to 8,000. I say between because obviously we don't know. Some of the improvements in performance could be clock speed orientated. We don't really know. However, typically, uh, in these type of instances, it's better to just increase the number of stream processes rather than trying to crank up the clock speed. Don't forget the TSMC themselves, in regards to the 16FF process, has said that it can provide a 65% higher speed, around two times the density, and or about 70% less power than 28NM, comparing with a 20 NM SOC technology, 16FF provides a 40% higher speed and 60% power saving. So, that's pretty damn nice. How does it stack up with Nvidia's GPU? Unfortunately, we just don't know that much. We can probably make some assumptions, apparently, from what Nvidia have told us and from what leaks have, uh, have uh, I guess, pointed to. NVIDIA are looking to have about 17 billion transistors. But the number of transistors obviously doesn't necessarily equal to the performance. I think it's fair to say that right now, yes, the Fury X is pretty impressive and the 980 Ti is pretty impressive, but let's just be totally honest. 
The real gaming nirvana right now is 4K at 60 frames per second plus. There are a lot of reasons that people are aiming for this. <clears throat> One would be virtual reality, where if we could start hitting that, virtual reality becomes a lot more sustainable, a lot more achievable, particularly if you're doing a dual GPU configuration like we know that AMD are going to be doing with their, with their various um, SDKs such as Liquid VR. So 4K 60 frames per second is going to be a rather tall order. The next reason that people are rather interested in the next generation GPUs, and this is something I've mentioned several times over, the current GPUs are just not fully DirectX 12 capable. That's not to say that they're not fully DirectX 12 compatible, but not fully capable. There is a distinct difference, in other words, they don't have hardware support for all of the DirectX 12 feature set. So, technically speaking, at least for now, the cards which are out, you get this kind of weird amalgamation where you're at different feature levels, and therefore you're probably going to get instances where certain AMD uh, cards are going to run certain games better, certain NVIDIA cards are going to run certain games better, and driver revisions are probably going to be make or break for quite a lot of performance, the amount of performance. The next generation GPUs, however, probably won't have any of this or these concerns, and to be honest with you, if they did, I have a feeling that many people would be rather disappointed, and from all the signs, it looks like those GPUs are going to be fully DirectX 12 compatible. Anyway, I am very much looking forward to seeing what happens. It's part of the reason that I've said for anyone who's asked me, hey, should I upgrade my GPU? And I've asked, well, what's your card currently? And they say something like a GTX 970, or they'll say something along the lines of an R9 290. And I say, like, well, unless you're going to be really pushing to 4K right now when you need to move to 4K for a specific reason, I'd say wait. I mean, really? There's no games out at the moment which are super duper taxing. They probably won't be for at least another, you know, five or six months. We're going to see DirectX 12 games really start to utilize the power of the GPU to the full extent that we're expecting it to. Therefore, it's probably better just to save your cash up, buy a HBM2 kit next year, maybe go Broadwell E or AMD Zen, depending what the hell's the better option. But for now, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.